You're on the air. Hello? One more time. You going to work with the Lord? Hello? All right. Call back uh, if you uh, have a comment. I don't know uh, that, that line was lit up there, but hey, it wasn't. Uh, I think sometimes we have trouble here. So, all right. So, friends, so so why is it? Why, why are we in this situation? Let me, let me just talk a little bit about uh, prayer for a moment. Sorry about that. In John, sometimes people say, well, you know, James, y'all say that, uh, you know, you can't pray. Friends, I, you know, when we say God doesn't hear us in his prayer, he doesn't hear it in the sense of he doesn't heed it. In John 9 and verse 31, the Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If God were not, if this man, if God were not with him, he could do nothing. So, God does not hear sinners in the sense of he doesn't heed it. Now, Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1 is where the man was quoting, or what he's referencing to. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is your heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face. Uh, from you that he will not hear. Now, friends, this is what we're trying to get people to see. And the principle for the alien sinner's prayer for salvation and the principle behind all these uh, prayer meetings and prayer groups that are going to happen on Sunday are one and the same. God's not going to hear your prayers when you're saying, pray for this nation, when you're not even on speaking terms with God. You're not even in a covenant with God. Let me make this point. When Israel of old prayed to God as a nation and God heard them as a nation, they were already on speaking terms with God. So as a nation, they could turn to God. Or they would, uh, or it was because a nation heard God's man doing the preaching and they responded to him. Look at this. In Jonah, here's a case where... Uh, People heard preaching, and they were not in a relationship with God. Look at this. In Jonah, verse 3, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the preaching that I bid thee. Now, Jonah is going to the Assyrians. They're not uh, Jews. They're not uh, uh, Israelites. They're not Israelites. They're not in a covenant relationship with God, but yet... God's prophet is going and he is preaching the bidding or the word that God bids him. Now notice what happens. When Jonah preaches, look what happens. He published it, he proclaimed it and published it through, by the, uh, through Nineveh by the decree of the king. This is Jonah chapter 3 verse 7. Let no man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Uh, let them uh, not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast uh, be covered with sackcloth, cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they had turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Now, friends, this is where the United States is right here. If everybody's going to turn and get God to turn his wrath away from the United States of America, you're going to have to turn at the preaching that God bids. Not what Billy Graham says. Not what John Hagee says. Not these false teachers like Kenneth Copeland. Not these false teachers like these local Baptists or the Barber Brothers or whoever. That's not what's going to help you get in a relationship with God. The preaching that Jonah told the Ninevites, the Ninevites that got them to turn was the preaching that God bid. And if a man is preaching something that's not in God's word, it is not going to have the effect of turning people to God. It's just not going to have the same effect. So 
What good is it going to do to have all these different various and a sundry uh, faiths and clergy members on a great day like 9-11 talking to people if it's not going to get them to turn to God? See? Well, what good is it going to do? But if you have the gospel being preached, the true, unadulterated, unperverted uh, gospel, it will it will turn people, or it will have the it will have the reaction that is necessary. In Acts 26, Acts 26 and verse 20, look what Paul says. Paul said, "I showed first of them at Damascus and at Jerusalem." and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet uh, for penance. Now, what we're trying to do, friends, is we're trying to turn, we're trying to turn individuals by the preaching of the gospel. You're not going to turn people to God if you don't tell, tell them the gospel. You just won't do it. You want another verse? I think it's 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 9. Let's see this. Uh, let's look at verse 8. First Thessalonians 1, verse 8. He says, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would be spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for the Son from heaven whom he hath raised from the dead, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. Friends, if preaching is not from God's word, it's not really, that's not really turning you to God. It's not really turning you to uh, righteousness. It's not really making you a nation of people that will be exalted because what you're believing is a lie. And that's why we're saying it doesn't do any good for y'all to have your prayers in the Board of Supervisors meeting. It doesn't do you any good for have prayers in the school board meeting. It doesn't do you any good to have the prayers before the football game. It doesn't have any, do any, have any prayers before the, or the national day of prayer that the presidents always have. Because these guys who are doing the leading are not telling you the words that can turn you to God. You see how see how it works, friends? You just you can't hear wrong and be taught a lie and then wind up in good relationship with God. The word of God is the power that can change lives. And nothing else can. So when you add man made doctrines and man made creeds, to the glorious gospel of Christ. What you've done is you've dimmed it and you've you're just blinding people to the point that they think, well, you know what? I, I'm in a good I'm on good terms with God. Oh no. Oh no. Notice this. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3, he said, If our gospel be hid, it hid from them that are lost. To whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is, the, <clears throat> who is the image of God should shine unto them. Friends, the gospel is what's going to turn people to God. Not these feel-good, soft soap, cotton candy sermons. Smooth-talking preachers that are going to give people some comfort, false hope. But if the gospel was really preached, plainly and firmly and boldly preached, events like 9-11 would truly have an impact on people and cause them to turn to God and seek God and be found, and he'd be found to them if they seek him according to his truth. It goes back to what we said in Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, Paul is telling the, the Athenians, he said, look, God's not far from you. You just need to seek him in the right way. You need to find him in the right way. Friends, 9-11, 9-11 ought to be a day that will burn in your, in your memory and live as a day in which you said, you know what? I'm going to find out who the true and living God is. Who is it that actually can help me in days like, to, like a, 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 of tragedy like 9-11? Who is it I'm going to turn to? Who are you going to turn to? Buddha? Who are you going to turn to? 
See, you're going to turn to a God that's not in this book? You're going to turn to a God that didn't write a book that you can understand? That's what, that's what Mark was saying to the, the caller earlier. You know, you're gonna, are you going to turn to a God that would say sprinkling's okay? Well, the God of the Bible says you have to be baptized. You're going to turn to a God, uh, the God of the, the uh, United Pentecostals or the Apostolics that say there's only one to Godhead? Is that the God you're going to turn to? That's not the God of the Bible. What God are you going to turn to? If you want to turn to the true living God, the one that can help you, you need to find the one in this book. And that's where the few friends in the Church of Christ come in. We want to help you. We want to help you. Last caller. You're on the word of the Lord. You're on the word of the Lord. Hey, how you doing, Jane? I'm doing good. Hello? Yeah, you're on. You're on. Okay, James, I got one question for you. Okay. Um, now, if you, if, like you said, they had the town, they had the town meeting today, uh, well, two since Tuscarora County. Yeah. Now, if, if now, the, the two say that they had the people who say the prayer, now, if like a Muslim or somebody else got a prayer in another religion, would you stay in there? I, I, I might stay in there, but they wouldn't be leading me. I don't bow my head when denominational preachers lead prayers anyway because they're not leading me in prayer if I'm in a place where a, a prayer is being led public funeral or something like that I don't bow my head because they're not their oh. prayer is not going any higher in the ceiling anyway oh yeah I might stay in there but they're not going they're not going to they're not leading me in prayer I'm not going to pretend like we're all on the same page same same playing field that make sense? Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. And I got one more question. All right, you got to be quick because I'm, I'm out of time. Now, you say, oh, uh, the, 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 okay, okay, the Lord, he don't listen to the sinner man's prayer? Right. He doesn't heed it. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, heed it, H-E-E-D. He doesn't pay attention to it or he doesn't respond to it, not the alien sinner. Not someone who's outside of a, of, a, of a covenant relationship with him. No. Okay. Now his children, yes, he he hears their prayers. But someone who's not in on in in a relationship with him, you got to obey him first before you get the benefit or the or the privilege of prayer. Does that help? Does that help you out? Okay. All right, friends, we're going to wrap up. Remember the tent meeting, September 19th through the 30th at Eden Mall. Come here, John Shannon, and uh, remember, no collection to be taken. I think we got a, we got a, uh, we got the billfold commercial, Scotty. All right, let's run a commercial for our tent meeting, and we're going to close off. Remember, stay tuned for religious review, 10:30. Always ask, what does the Bible say? You get a word from the Lord, then you can do your own religious review. Have a good night.